Hello, welcome to Tiny Bench. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. We have a couple of Marantz Model 9 amplifiers and we are going to do a full restoration. You know, they have some cosmetic flaws, but you gotta cut them some slack. They are 60 years old. They have been butchered on the inside by a previous technician and uh, we are gonna fix all of that and do a full restoration of these units. Here's the inside of the amplifier. And the reason why the owner decided to bring them to me is because they are hot plating and ruin his brand new Gold Lion tubes. So we are going to fix the uh, red plating and go ahead and do a full restoration. There is a capacitor cover in jail. Which one it is? That one. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's glossy. It's electrolyte is coming out. Here we have a resistor here that looks kind of dark for some reason. Sorry, I meant capacitor, not resistor. Uh, there are a bunch of these that are broken. There is a lot of, uh, for example, here that uh, you see how the cables were simply soldered in. I don't like that. I like to have a better mechanical connection. There's a bunch of resistors out of tolerance. Absolutely each and every capacitor is going to be replaced. It's going to be a little challenging because there's a multi-can capacitor in there and we are going to keep the can just to preserve the original look. So I'm going to have to find a way to mount the new capacitors Somewhere in this area, there's not a lot of space. I'm gonna have to get creative and find a way to do it. Some resistors were replaced on one that are different. And so I'm gonna make the amplifiers identical so that they sound identical and have a good stereo imaging for a good holography, you know, instrument separation, special cues, a really good three-dimensional sound field. So I am pretty excited. To tackle this thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey i have been warned i'm gonna have to be very careful on soldering the components because the board can apparently break when you apply heat and force as you can see this guy has been completely broken off on the board on the other amplifier these cables are taped together they were supposed to be soldered onto this post over here i don't know why they're simply taped together over here as you can see there's like a mess over here another one of the posts were broken and uh, a technician had to mount this bracket over here on the other amplifier as you can see there's a uh, cold soldering in there this little cable right here look how it looks burnt maybe a capacitor exploded in that area because the amplifier has been recapped about 25 years ago uh, over here there's some uh, cold solder over here there's quite a few things to fix in addition to the restoration replace this uh, 150 volt center diode which is uh, has like a 20 percent tolerance with a new five percent tolerance center diode here's another little mess over here to uh, to clean up replace the, all these rectifier diodes i am just going to go ahead and get started the red plating was caused by a broken tube socket pin in a burned grit resistor after resoldering the broken tube socket pin and Replacing the broken grid resistors with a temporary one until the new parts arrive, negative bias voltage was re-established and the amplifier was no longer red plating. I must be careful, you know, reassembling the circuit as everything is going to be rearranged. So everything is going to be relocated, but it must be electrically equivalent. So i got to remember how, how it goes back electrically. Boom! <laughs> get him Broco. get him did you jump i hope i didn't scare you too bad if you like this video so far i would really appreciate it if you liked subscribe and leave a comment
have to go to the oscilloscope and find the inside and outside foil. We put the inside foil towards the tube and the outside foil to ground. The outside foil will have more noise than the inside foil. I put it on the probe of the oscilloscope and then I'm gonna touch it. And then what I do is I put my hand here on the metal and I look at the amplitude. Right now I'm gonna reverse it. Now I'm gonna put the ground here and the probe over here. Oh, you see that? Much noisier. Okay, so this is the outside foil and this one is the inside foil. So I'm going to take a marker and mark it just like that. All right, and I will be doing that throughout the project. Doing this makes the amplifier quieter. Do you own any vintage audio equipment that needs to be repaired and are you planning on doing it yourself? If so, what is it? Please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it. And don't hesitate to reach out if you think I can help. These are amazing. CYM, these are designed for power supplies. They are 12,000 hours, 105 degrees, and a very high ripple current. I don't remember the number, but it was very, very, very high ripple current. So they are perfect for power supply. And as you already know, Michigan is legendary for quality. As you can see, this section of the amplifier is already done and I am sorry for not showing you how I did it, but I actually lost the footage. Because of the limited space and complexity, this section of the amplifier actually took me over three hours to complete. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. I have the amplifier connected to the Variac and I'm using the dim bulb and in the dim bulb I am using a 5 watt only LED bulb. So the amplifier is only receiving about 5 watts. So I can take a look at how the power supply behaves in a very safe manner. So let's take a look here. Usually we would have 500 volts. We have 11. That's after it goes through the transformers. So I can take a look and, you know, make sure there are no anomalies and everything looks good. Let's look at the negative bias voltage. So it is a very safe way to take a look at how the power supply is behaving without applying real power. You know, even, even if there's a, a short circuit, a dead short, no more than five watts would be able to uh, flow through the amplifier and basically harm nothing. So everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and put real power on it now. I went ahead and tested the amplifier and everything is working perfectly. So I went ahead and did the same thing to the other amplifier. So now both amplifiers had the power supply rebuilt. I'm going to go ahead and replace the negative bias power supply filter capacitors. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and change those two as well. So that will take care of all the electrolytic capacitors in the units. These are 20 microfarads, 150 volts, and the new ones are 22 microfarads, 200 volts. Michigans. They have excellent electrical characteristics, 12,000 hours, 105 degrees, very high ripple current. Two hundred and fifty microfarads, twelve volts DC. Ten microfarads, two hundred and fifty volts DC. The two hundred and fifty microfarads, twelve volt capacitor will be replaced with a Rubicon ZLH series, thirty five volts, two hundred and seventy microfarads. And the 10 microfarads 250 volt capacitor will be replaced with a Nichicon UCA series 10 microfarads 250 volts capacitor. Guys, I'm just going to install them because my hands are going to be in the way. There is just no room for me to film. All right, guys, I replaced those two and those two and tested the amplifier. Everything is okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. 
all the electrolytic capacitors in the amplifier have been replaced so let's go ahead and replace the film capacitors and also any resistors out of value some of these resistors are right under some of these capacitors so i'm going to remove the capacitors measure the resistors that are under the capacitors and replace them if necessary i'm also going to replace this little bitty ceramic capacitors 150 picofarads and just because they're different than the other amplifier let me show you just because they're different i am going to replace them all with very nice new ones just to make them all the same and also going to clean some of this work that looks like it was done by a chimpanzee This corner is kind of difficult for me to show you what I do, but I'll do the best I can. I went ahead and marked all the outside foils and the, the inside foil, I'm sorry, on the, on the oscilloscope. So I put a, a, a black line. The outside foil will be closer to ground and the inside foil will be quieter, uh, less noise, more noise rejection. I already checked the resistors and these are within specs. Damn it, I put that one the wrong way. I gotta flip it around. The next thing I wanna do is replace these four coupling capacitors. As you can see, the capacitors that we're going to replace next share a soldering joint with the ceramic capacitors that we also have to replace. So we'll go ahead and do them at the same time. Coincidentally, we have to replace these resistors, these resistors, and these resistors. So we'll go ahead and do it all at the same time. This resistor over here is part of the negative bias circuit. The negative bias voltage comes through this resistor then goes through this resistor, then through this resistor and into pin five of the output tubes. The audio signal flows through this coupling capacitor, then through the this resistor and this resistor and into pin five. The audio signal does not flow through this resistor, which is 150K, this one is 68K and this one is 1K. So because the audio signal does not flow through this one, I am going to replace this one with metal film. However, the audio signal does flow through this 68 and through this uh, 68K and through this 1K. So these two are going to be replaced with carbon composition resistor because it is believed that they sound better. These are carbon composition resistors and these are metal film resistors. The metal film resistors are extremely quiet. They have very tight tolerances of 1%. They are extremely stable. They are ideal. They are perfect. The carbon composition resistors are imperfect. They have very loose tolerances. They are noisy. They wander up in value. They can change in value as you solder them in. They are imperfect. People stay the hell away from this. So you may be wondering, why are we using this? Well, they seem to sound better. So we're going to be using this in the audio path.
if that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with these uh, really ugly ones that were done uh, by a chimpanzee. And since a chimpanzee already worked on this amp, I decided to let Rocco work on the other one. So that'll help me move along. Right, Rocco, you ready? <laughs> Let's get this done. Oh, this guy's pretty loose. Hope I don't break it, but I gotta try. I think these have been the most difficult components to remove in my life. Never had such a hard time removing the old components. And now I understand why an impatient technician would break this. But it's not as bad as I was told. It's doable. Just very time consuming and not people are not willing to put the time into it. People are not willing to spend the time to do it right. What a fight! Rocco already did his side, right? He finished before me. I'm too slow. Let's make sure we did this right. We have the negative bias voltage flowing through this 150K resistor, then through the 68K resistor, then through the 1K resistor and into pin five of the output tube. We have the audio signal flowing through this coupling capacitor, then through the 68K ohm uh, resistor, then through the one kilo ohm resistor and into pin five. And we have the 150 picofarad ceramic capacitor connected in parallel with a 68 kilo ohm resistor. And then on the 
the other side, we have the negative bias voltage flowing through the 150 kilo ohm resistor, then through the 68 kilo ohm resistor, then through the one kilo ohm resistor and into pin five. And we have the audio signal flowing through the coupling capacitor, then going through the 68 kilo ohm resistor, then through the one kilo ohm resistor and into pin five. And we have the 150 picofarad capacitor connected in parallel with the 68 kilo ohm resistor. So everything checks out okay. I want to reiterate how using a, an LED bulb on my dim bulb allows me to measure voltages with extremely low power. This bulb uses a total of 9.5 watts, so I can take measurements without hurting anything if I make a mistake. Let me show you. Okay, let me check the negative bias voltage that what I just worked on, and that's a uh, negative 1.1. Same over here. And let me compare to the ones that I have not worked on yet and exactly the same. So they're all the same, the ones that I worked on and the ones that I have not worked on yet. So that indicates that everything is okay, very safely. Okay, so far Rocco and I have made great progress. This is a uh, Rocco's amplifier. He's working on this one, right Rocco? I'm working on this one. Let's do um, inventory of what we have left to do. I still have to replace this resistor, this is the grounding resistor for the negative bias circuit. That is a very, very important resistor. So we'll replace it with a new one. No audio flows through this, so I'm gonna use metal film. And I still have to replace these three film capacitors. There is a 150 volt Zener diode over here that we're gonna replace. We are going to replace that diode, these four diodes, and some resistors out of value, and I think that's it. Let's measure the resistance that we just replaced. It is supposed to be 2.2 kilo ohms. Right on the dot, 2.2 kilo ohms. 2.191, that is absolutely perfect. Let's see the old one. 2.7 kilo ohms, way off. We are doing much better now. We are in business. Okay, Rocco, do listen to the other one. I am replacing the grid resistors. I removed them all, and now I am installing the new ones. All right, there is one, two, three film capacitors left to replace in the amplifier. So let's go ahead and get it done. Look at the size of this monster. Want to buy them?
no more capacitors to replace so let's replace the 150 volt zener diode luckily i have rocco finishing the other one so we are in business moving along let's go ahead and measure the 150 volt zener diode 157 let's see the other one 168.3 the new ones have a 1% tolerance, so they are going to be very, very close together. I meant 5% tolerance, not 1. Let's go ahead and replace those right there, these diodes. be a lot easier to leave this junk behind but i don't like working like that i can simply mount the new ones on top of all that junk and be done real quick like a professional wow this is a pain in the a double s I understand why an impatient technician broke a bunch of these. But you know what? I haven't broken a single one. The guy must have really lost his temper and broke him angrily because they are an incredible pain in the AWS to work with. Guys, we're gonna have to clean this. It's getting clogged up. I'm gonna have to open it up and clean it. This is about a third of what came out of it. It was completely stopped up. All right, let's get going. This resistor over here is supposed to be 3.3 .3 and it measures 4.6. So since we gotta work on this post to replace the, to put the diodes back in, let's go ahead and replace this resistor as well. Three point three ohms, one watt, and we'll do the same to the other amp just to keep them identical. There's one more diode to replace. Can you see it? Right in there. Same as the other ones. And the only thing we have left to do is go through absolutely each and every resistor in the amplifier and replace those that are out of tolerance in some cases i may have to lift one leg of the circuit because sometimes there are other components connected in parallel with the resistor that affect the reading as i measure the value of the resistors i have to look at their position in the schematic diagram to make sure that there is nothing affecting the values i'm going to show you how i do a couple and then I'm going to do the rest by myself because this is really boring and tedious and the video would last an eternity. But uh, let me go ahead and start with these two over here. 49.47 and 52. These are supposed to be 47 kilo ohms plus or minus 2%. That means they can be in between 47.94 and 46.06 okay so they both have to come out here's a good example this resistor over here red red black that is 22 ohms it measures 4.2 in this case because it's connected in parallel with other parts i'm going to have to lift one side and then measure it as you can see i got one leg lifted out of the circuit let's see what it measures now 
24.6 the upper limit would have been 24.2 so it is out of specs by just a tiny bit but it's already halfway out so i'll go ahead and replace it You know what's funny? There's a 12 kilo ohm resistor in there. Measures perfect, but looks like hell. So I'm gonna change it. Let me show you. Look at this guy, seeing better days. Probably nothing wrong with it, but since it's a very important resistor because it's part of the negative bias, I wanna put a new one. Metal film, that'll be a lot more reliable. If this guy fails, we would have a catastrophic disaster. All the out of tolerance resistors have been replaced on both units. Besides all the resistors that you saw me replace, I went ahead and replaced those. Now the restoration is pretty much complete, but I still have a few issues to take care of. Over here, one of that post broke. You know, one of these posts, you see that empty hole right there? One of them broke off. And the cables that were on that post are now right here. You know, held together with electrical tape. That's terrible. I have to come up with a solution somehow. And uh, on this one, I don't know why they did the same thing because the post is still there. I put a drop of crazy glue on it and it is quite solid. So I am going to attach these cables to this post again and that'll be fixed. But we have another issue. The switch that selects between single-ended and push-pull is bad. So I'm going to have to wire the amplifier directly behind the switch for single-ended operation. And we'll have to do the same over here until I can get a new switch. I wired the switch into triode mode. I also added a arcing suppression capacitor to the power switch because there was a turn off thump and that fixed it. So I did that to both amps and uh, this one's also wired in triode mode. The only thing I still haven't done that I'm gonna do right now is you know, uh, take the cables, these cables that are supposed to be soldered onto this log. What I'm gonna do with this one is I am going to cut this piece off, solder the three wires together and put a couple of layers of heat shrink around it and tie wrap it to one of the other posts. The cables are now extremely well insulated and safely held in place. Those cables are now safely soldered where they are supposed to be. Sorry, I'm always playing the classical music, but because of the copyrights, that's all I can play without getting in trouble. 
but of course I listen to all kinds of music. I am incredibly impressed with the amount of sweetness coming out of these amplifiers. They sound just incredible incredibly sweet that's the best way i can describe them but at the same time the micro detail is unbelievable imaging and all of that of course you can do that the spacing between instruments you know the whole nine yards the instrument separation the timber the tone all of that yes i was expecting but the the level of tube sweetness that it has is just absolutely spectacular these really might be the best sounding amplifiers I ever had here at the tiny bench. I let the owner know that they were ready and I just want to listen to them and enjoy them before he comes and gets them. So once again, thank you very much for coming along with me on this journey. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. I want to thank you very much for watching my videos. Please like and subscribe and I will see you again very soon. And as always, I wish you good health, well-being, happiness, and lots of love.